This is Daybreak. Thanks for staying with us. The hashtag on X is Citizen Daybreak. The SMS code is 22422 at Citizen TV Kenya and at Ayub Abdikadi. Dr. Evans Kamuri is the CEO of the Kenyatta National Hospital. Dr. Brian Lishenga is the chairperson of the Kenya Rural Urban Hospital as Hospitals Association of Kenya. Dr. Philip Kirwa, CEO of the Moi Techigan Referral Hospital. Dr. Richard Lesiampe, the CEO of Janamogi Oginga Odinga Referral Teaching and Referral Hospital, as well as Dr. Ahmed Dakane, who will be joining us here on the broadcast. Virtually, is the CEO of the Kenyatta University Teaching and Referral Hospital in the country. Let's get, the, get this feedback from the public from the county of Wasingishi in Eldoret City, and here's what they said on the state of the referral hospital. I have a patient from Kisi. I have a patient from tumor. I have a patient from Kisi. I have a patient from Kisi. I have a patient uh, to kambiwa shaifanyi and the total cost of uh, uh, procedure ni mama ma anafaa kufanyiwa ni 300 and 300,000 ambayo ni <coughs> anafaa kufanyiwa uh, head mass uh, biopsy plus afanyiwe uh, external biliary obstruction sababu ako na shida ya biliary nini bankrate yake ime iko na blockage ni wanaitwa Reni Shomondi natoka huku Migori Nimekuja on Tuesday ndiyo siku yangu ilikuwa ya clinic. Sasa hiyo siku network haiku kuwa siku mbili. Hiyo Tuesday na, na Wednesday. Sasa Thursday sisi ikakuwa. Sasa nikijitambulisa kwa sha, nikapatikana niku kwa sha. Sasa jina ya mtoto haiku kuwa inapatikana. Hiyo day nikamaliza hivo siku pata matibabu hadi weekend. Adi leo ndio ninaanzisa matibabu. Sasa hiyo mambo ya sha haiko sawa. Kumajira anaitwa Benson Juma Akumu. Mimi ni Citizen Health Advocate hapa wa Singishu. Na pia at the same time I'm a community health promoter. Ukweli ni kwamba the whole thing about sha and the whole idea is very good. But the problem we have some system technical problem kwa mambo ya sha ambayo nadhani serikali inafanya shughulike kwa dharura. Kwa mfano he hospital ya MTRH is a referral hospital ambayo inashughulikia wagonjwa kutoka northern part of Kenya wasingishu actually in a, in a cushion so many counties iko hata kingia ndani sasa utapata kwa overcrowded changamoto kubwa imekuwa payment system and i think the system ya SHA iko na changamoto ambayo the, the only people ambayo wanaweza kusaidia raia ni serikali kuu kwa sababu hospitali haina shida it's playing their role wanashughulikia wagonjwa lakini sasa hapo kwa payment Ndiyo mali kuna changamoto kubwa? Mimi ni mgonjwa wa kansa. Ni kuna throat cancer. Sasa hii ni wiki yangu ya pili hapa. Kwa damu wale nifukuza. Hakuna ya kuwa. Hakuna kitu kama hiyo. Nikatu wakash. Shingi miya saba. Likuwa miya saba na talatini. Madawa pia sahi ni meandikiwa. Hmm? Shia ifanyi. Mina anda kununua hizi dawa inje. Na hizi dawa za. Za nini? Za. Ya hii ugonjwa wa nini? Ya kansa. Wajua nibe yao ni, ni gali sana. Hmm? Na mi sahi na rinyumbani na mebaki na elifu moja. Saa bili ni ende tu. Hmm. Ya elifu moja ni fikisha ya oma beyi. Wenzangu kiwa nayo kwa sababu mimi ni mko ni bwelele. Kwa sababu hii mgonjwa ushimshia kwa na mimi kwa sana. Hata kiangalia mimi nimeisha. Sasa wana waende wanichangia ni kana za nikapata hizi dawa ninunue. Hmm. Lakini mimi narudi bila dawa. Sha ni mzuri sana. Nimeipenda sana. Maana hata mimi nimekuwa hapa na mgonjwa hapa rifara alikuwa amelazwa na nikamkatia sha ilikuwa on Thursday ika activate nikaambia nilipe shilingi 1300 ika activate on Friday akalala Saturday akafa lakini wakati nilienda kwa bill ikaonekana ya kwamba sha ililipa bill yote shilingi 1107 na nikashukuru Mungu sana maana singe singeweza kupata hata hiyo pesa all right uh, members of the public there uh, at uh, 
the Moy Teaching and Referral Hospital in the county of Wasingishu. Dr. Kamuri, coming to you. We, we talked about equipment, largely mixed views there from uh, Kenyans and uh, some calling for the upscaling of the system to work properly. And uh, the general bed occupancy at uh, the Kenyatta National Hospital uh, in 2019, when uh, the Parliamentary Health Committee did its fact-finding mission, was 114%. That's more than um, what was available. And it also pointed out that uh, the hospital <laughs> had lacked resuscitation equipment and they were not provided with ICT support to make their work easy and error free even though the designs were not the best the beds in the wards were not proper as they could not pop up prop up patients with certain injuries including those with spinal challenges how can this be fixed because they have to get care after all well um, fixing a system does not take one day that's one thing and we've had this um, discussion from at the level of parliament, at the level of the ministry, and even at the level of the board, that um, you know Kenyatta has been in existence for more than 120 years uh, and running. And some of the equipments have been, um, have been obsolete. And uh, again, I want to take this opportunity to thank the parliament. After that, uh, that uh, engagement with parliament yeah. and the ministry, the, the budget uh, allocation allocated Kenyatta uh, an estimated one billion uh -huh. to upgrade to upgrade the facility, including equipment. And since that time, we have actually been doing equipment upgrade. And as you've said also, the numbers. Uh, and that's why we are really advocating for SHA to start working so that we can start doing the actual filtering. As uh, Kirwa said, we still have a burden on indigents can't pay, won't pay, and will not deny them services because it is a right. So we've been having overwhelming numbers because, again, the failure of the referral system. So in, in that regard, then, uh, the can't pay, won't pay, which is not their fault because of uh, their um, economic capacity. W what then happens? Does that burden fall back to the institution then? Uh, previously, and that's why if you listen to what Kirwa has said, previously, the burden falls to the the, 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 the institution. Yeah. But now with SHA, we are covered. The, the, the people can't pay, they will be covered through the, the primary health and also the e, e, um, emergency and uh, chronic uh, illness. So those people who can't pay won't pay, they will be uh, clamped there and we will now ask for a uh, refund from the, from the SHA. That will be um, a salvage for us. Two, the fact that now we see, uh, we see patients and we, we are paid, there is the element of FIF. Now the facility in infrastructure will be improved because once we get the rebates from the NHIF and the, the, even the people who are not able to pay now will be using that money to upgrade the equipment. And I've said the parliament awarded us some money uh, and they have also, even the current budget as we speak, they have also allocated us some money to upgrade this equipment. So this is a, these are going, these are um, uh, an ongoing work in progress. It is not something we can say that we can be able to, uh, to do all the equipment at the same time. Mm -hmm. But we have been prioritizing what are the most critical uh, areas that are, uh, Kenyans are being affected. Mm -hmm. And as I've said, for example, for the Reno, then dialysis. At the moment, we are actually in the process of installing a set of a leasing program for the hospital, so that again we can restart the whole process of um, dialysis. When we come to the issue of dialysis, and I know this is an issue that has is, yeah. has been uh, very thorny. Mm -hmm. Two things the Shah has done. One, we are looking at before uh, diagnosis, during. Uh, diagnosis and post-diagnosis. Initially, there was no element of, the, of um, investigation covered by NHIF. At the moment, the moment you have chronic renal uh, disease, we, you are covered for investigation. If it comes that we must now do your dialysis, you are covered within the phase of dialysis. And the good thing again, even if the doctor feels that you need more dialysis, the doctor prescribes that you need more than two dialysis per week, the SHA covers that. And post-dialysis, initially, initially, 
we were having challenge in post-dialysis and post-treatment maintenance. Again, if you look at the package, it has divided uh, the, 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 the treatment in, as I said, pre, uh, during, and post. For transplant, for example, okay. For transplant, which has been a challenge, which has been making many people go to uh, abroad for the uh, for the services, what Shah has done has first uh, isolated a certain amount of money to do you the pre-diagnosis uh, examinations. That is the, the the investigations, radiological. You 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 have a package that covers you for <coughs> investigation. <coughs> then you have a package for both the donor and the recipient. There is a package for transplant, which is comprehensive. And there is also a package for recipient, which is not the same as the donor. So is that a process done here locally? Or? Here, here, here. Okay. In fact, if you watched yesterday when we were doing the visit with uh, Madam See. Waziri, we actually, so we did our, uh, our first share, we will say share, uh, as in within the benefit of share, on uh, last week. Uh, this is the sixth day post-op. So, the, the Shah covers the transplant. And also, okay. what has been a challenge and what the, even the, 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 the patient groups have been advocating. You see, you are transplanted, but after that, you used to be left alone to sort out what happens after the transplant. So what Shah has done, even after we finish with your, with your transplant, okay. We are covering you for what we call post-transplant management, including the immuno, immunosuppressants, the drug that we use for post-transplant. Um, post Again, this is covered, and this has been one of our major challenges in managing these All patients. Right. With we'll talk about the oncology department as well, because uh, that was an area that was uh, uh, fingered by the uh, parliamentary committee as well. Yes, Dr. Lesempe, you had a point yeah, earlier on. Thank you very much, uh, Ayub. I just wanted to... Uh, uh, to follow up with what uh, Dr. Dichenga said. Uh, I, I agree and I respect the fact that uh, yeah, we need the private sector. You know, we need the faith-based hospitals really to support us and, uh, and help Kenyans. And uh, I'm happy to say that I think for the first time, I think uh, Shah is actually bringing all of us on board, you know, creating equity, creating inclusiveness, you know, and creating probably expanded services to, uh, to Kenyans. Uh, I, I would just like to mention one thing. Uh, and forgive me for going back to history. I'm also an, history, an historian. Okay. NHIF was established in 1966. I think most of you are not born. 1966. You know, and it was basically to provide uh, 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 some services, actually to <coughs> employees who are, uh, who are on regular pay. The same system, you know, was actually reviewed, I think, uh, in uh, 1972 you know, uh, piecemeal, you know, I think review. It also was reviewed, I think, in 2009 and 2018. What I'm trying to say here is that I, I think uh, a system that was in 1966 cannot support us today. It can't. Things have changed. Things have changed. Disease burden have changed. I, I think even our orientation has changed. You know, technology has changed. You know, uh, we are using cards, I think, with NHIF. You know, now we are not even using cards. In fact, you register automatically. You don't need to have a card. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, when uh, Dr. Lichenga mentioned the issue of uh, authorization, I agree that uh, probably there could be some errors, you know, uh, that will be, you know, seen or actually be experienced. But we, I think the system also has a mechanism whereby it actually follows, you know, from, you know, the, uh, uh, the placement of the claim. You know, it also actually checks whether the appropriate documents, you know, which are scanned, have actually been included. It goes, you can actually monitor it in, until it is received at Shah headquarters. You also see it, in fact, uh, through the system, whether it's actually accepted or rejected. And I believe there is a default mechanism. If the figure is 32,000 for, uh, uh, for, for CS, yeah. you know, uh, there must be a default mechanism that it cannot allow any figure for CS to be more than 32,000. So I, I believe that uh, uh, some of these things, I think, progressively can actually be corrected. And his point was then, how do we remedy? In, because yes, so that's why I'm, why I'm coming error can be, So what I'm trying yeah, to say is that... Uh, we are susceptible yeah. to making errors, but yes. in such situations then, yes. yes, it's not logical for a CS process to be 320,000 Kenya shillings. Yes. But how do we then remedy that within the portal, within the system? 
Yes, and that's what I'm saying. Uh, I'm not here defending Shah, but I'm trying to just to uh, to be a, a leader and actually an individual running a facility yeah. like that of uh, like uh, Jaramogi Oginga Odinga. That, you know, some of these errors, for example, I think it could be, uh, I know it's very serious, you know, a zero is very, very important. Yeah. You, know, you can't just ignore it. <laughs> 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 but uh, the point here is that uh, we cannot actually throw, you know, uh, water and the baby in a basin. I think these are some of the things that can be corrected. Uh, the other thing that I would like to say is that, you know, NHIF has been here, I think, for 58 years. Mm. You know? And it has actually uh, progressively improved on its services. In fact, it was a system that introduced, you know, uh, additional services continuously on a, on a piecemeal basis. This is the first time uh, that we have actually tried to go to share, to have a whole comprehensive, you know, revolution in terms of, you know, uh, universal health care. I, I think Kenyatta one, you know, did uh, establish in, uh, in 1966, he uh, established NHIF. You know, uh, His Excellency, the President Mweke Baki and Uhuru also attempted, you know. This is the first time I think uh, we are saying that we want to go the whole hog. And basically for me, sitting here as a head of a referral facility, All right. I think this is a momentous time for us. And therefore, some of these uh, challenges, we actually need to agree that we need to correct the system. But what has happened so far the last 35 days, for me, for example, actually uh, admitting a patient through NHIF was taking seven days to get approval, sometimes even 14 days. The fact that today I can actually uh, uh, admit a patient within four minutes, it's actually a great relief, not only for me, but also for the patient. Okay. Yes, Dr. Yeah. Lishang. I, and, I, and I agree that uh, we need to critique the system for purposes of improving it. I, I just, you know, following up on what uh, Dr. Kamuri is talking about, uh, dialysis, for instance, I, I, find, it, I find it problematic that uh, 60, 58 years later, mm. uh, Kenyatta Teaching and Referral, uh, Kenyatta National Hospital is struggling to cope with the dialyzing patients and they have machines which are down. What we should be talking about at the National Referral Hospital is actually organ transplant. You agree that no Kenyan can afford dialysis in perpetuity. It's yeah, not correct. possible. There's nobody who can afford that. And I was just looking at some of the numbers that uh, were in the budget policy statement, your own numbers. And I think that uh, 2022, 2023 financial year, you, you, you managed to move to 19 kidney transplants. In my view, now that SHA is compensating 800,000 uh, for a renal transplant, what we really need to be talking about, JUTE and uh, KNH and MTRH, is how do we get more patients off dialysis and how do we set up a system where organ transplant works? Uh, that, that really is a direction. I mean, it, it's nice for us to say we can get more dialysis machines, ETC, but really what we as the sector are looking up to the referral hospitals to is to trailblaze. I'll give you an example. Even on digital health, uh, now we are moving to the area of AI in healthcare and all these things. Mm -hmm. uh, I know, for example, KNH and KUTTRH have very strong telemedicine and teleradiology okay. departments. Why can't we move to a place where that is where we take the conversation? I think that the challenges we are experiencing, and Kenyans are saying it, that if I am not in the portal, these are not challenges of the making of KNH or uh, MTRH. Okay. These are challenges being made by the transition. We do need to manage the transition better so that if a patient comes from Migori to MTRH, they don't have to wait for an entire weekend for us to confirm that their dependent is in the system. All right. This is what we are saying. And let's now, uh, gentlemen, uh, link up with the uh, Chief Executive Officer of the Kenyatta University Teaching and Referral Hospital. My colleague, Willie Lusuge, is standing by uh, with him. Good morning, Willie, and good morning, Dr. Dakane. How has the transition been, given uh, that we are now some 30 days into this and uh, the fair share uh, degree of uh, challenges that Kenyans have said they are experiencing in regards to the transition? 
Thank you, I hope definitely it's 30 days since we transformed or transitioned from the old funding system which was NHIF now to SHA and we want to have this conversation similar to what is happening in the studio to hear from the horse's mouth here at the Kenyatta University Teaching and Referral Hospital to hear from them being one of the biggest referral hospitals having a capacity of 650 beds. We want to hear from them what has been the sum of the challenges, how are they trying to mitigate those kind of challenges and maybe in one way or another Another, how are they advising the government to be able to have maybe a better and functioning system in charge uh, of SHA? So we want to speak to the CEO in charge of Kenyatta uh, University and Teaching Referral Hospital. This is Mr. Ahmed Dagani. Thank you so much for joining us on Citizen TV. Maybe briefly tell us as we transition, it's now 30 days since we transitioned to SHA, some of the challenges that you have been facing being one of the biggest referral hospitals in the country. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, it's a very good morning to have uh, Citizen TV um, uh, and inform Kenyans about this uh, conversation uh, since uh, the transition from uh, National Hospital Insurance Fund, NHIF, to SHA, Social Health Authority. It's been one month now and uh, there have been significant strides that have been made uh, as a result. Um, yes, of course, as uh, my colleagues uh, from, uh, in the studio have uh, also mentioned, we've had challenges uh, during the rollout, particularly the first week. Uh, but I can say that we have really uh, made significant strides. Uh, mostly uh, issues were related to the system at the beginning, uh, where uh, there was lack of capacity building, uh, with uh, some of the staff not knowing how to uh, do the claims and all that. Uh, some of the patients are not knowing how to register and all that, but now there have been a lot of sensitization. We have done uh, training uh, for the staff. We've partnered with SHA. Uh, we've had uh, a lot of uh, engagement uh, back um, uh, with, the, with the Social Health Authority. Uh, we've also um, uh, opened up several registration points uh, for visitors and patients where they can register and be able to, ass to be assisted to go through uh, the system. Um, of course, the staff also have been trained on how to do uh, billing and uh, claims management. So we've made significant strides. We can see increased number of uh, registrations. Uh, daily we do registrations uh, for visitors and, uh, and patients. So um, one month down the line, I can say things have gotten much better. So th those were the basic uh, kind of issues that you faced as a hospital initially, but there are other complicated issues that you have faced under SHA, maybe some of them? We, uh, we, we have seen some misinformation uh, in the public where uh, some um, have uh, been asked to pay out of pocket. Um, but then uh, we are not requiring anyone to pay out of pocket. We, patients, when they come through, um, as long as they are registered under SHA, we keep saying that uh, patients uh, should be registered. As long as they are registered, we are not requiring them to pay out of pocket. We continue to engage uh, members of the public, uh, the patients who come, the relatives and the staff, uh, not to be asking any Kenyan to uh, pay out of pocket. Um, we, of course, we've had, uh, uh, we will continue to have dialogue with the Social Health Authority. There are some services that, um, um, uh, that need to be enhanced, but we're going to have that conversation. But as, as I can say, uh, right here um, behind us is the Integrated Molecular Imaging Center. And um, our flagship project is uh, cancer management. So we are the largest uh, referral uh, hospital here that has a comprehensive uh, cancer management. So uh, that means that we, we have everything possible. We have all the specialized equipments. We have the, spe uh, the specialty staff. Um, who are able to take care of that. So this is the diagnostic center. This is where we have the PET CT, we have uh, uh, SPECT CT, we have all kind of specialized uh, machines here, uh, this building uh, behind us. And so uh, with, with SHA, um, I can say that there have been significant improvement as far as the package for cancer management goes. For example, for PET CT, um, we, the initial package with under, under NHIF was 50,000. And now, um, and patients used to top up uh, a little. Uh, with SHA now, uh, patients will be paying, uh, uh, SHA will be paying 53,500. Um, and then there's another um, uh, test here that is done called PSMA, uh, prostate specific membrane antigen uh, scan. And that under NHIF, um, it used to be 50,000 um, again. But then with SHA now, that has been enhanced and Shah will be paying 64,200. 
uh, that means it's also comprehensive. Patients will not be paying out of pocket. So these are some of the significant uh, changes that we have seen that are positive. And most of the changes that we've seen uh, so far um, are cancer related. So the, uh, it's, a, it's a really a good thing uh, because we have a large number of cancer patients. Um, and then again, as a hospital with the specialized uh, services, with cancer being a flagship project, we are treating not just Kenyans here, we are also treating patients from outside the country. We have so far treated uh, patients from 22 countries. So we are also going uh, through this universal health coverage. Um, it means that we are we're going to be having inbound medical tourism, and that is what is uh, going to support uh, this call for universal health coverage under the government um, agenda. We have significant support uh, from the Ministry of Health uh, under the leadership of our Cabinet Secretary, uh, Debra, uh, Dr. Deborah uh, Barasa. So we work very closely. We want to continue uh, to take care of these patients. And as I can say, that one month down the line, we are saying, we're seeing a lot of improvements. And we'll continue to engage the members of the pub public and the patients and their, and their relatives so that we can give them the right information. And, and when we talk about these, some kind of uh, sickness like cancer, which are highly demanding in terms of funds, we have seen even a few minutes ago some patients were speaking to us on Citizen TV and they're still saying that they're going to some of these referral hospitals, they're still being turned away or they're still being insisted that they have to pay. Um, we have seen also the number of those patients increasing rapidly as time goes on. Maybe do you have enough staff to handle such kind of illnesses, especially that this is a public hospital, the number of patients will be many, some of them will not be be having funds but they all depend on SHA. So are you well equipped? Are you well uh, staffed? Yes we are. We are well equipped. In fact we have state-of-the-art equipment uh, in this facility. Uh, if you have time we can go around and, and see them. Um, we are also staffed. We are staffed. We have highly specialized uh, staff. But I think uh, regarding your question I can say that some of the issues we are encountering are patients who are not registered under SHA. There are some patients, I think it has also been mentioned in the studio, that there are patients who are still under the former NHIF and they have not uh, migrated uh, to SHA and that causes, uh, causes a problem because that still requires a copay. So what we are doing is we are helping the patients to, to, be, uh, to be migrated to SHA so that they can access those services immediately. The other positive thing with SHA one month down the line is the uh, previously, when somebody registers for a uh, national health insurance fund, they had to wait for three months for them to access uh, services. But with SHA, it's an immediate thing. As, as, as soon as you register, you can get your services. So I think there's some means of information. We will still continue to uh, support the, the members of public uh, as far as how to get these services uh, quickly. We have had even patients from other hospitals raising questions in terms of human error. They're saying the system does not accommodate such kind of an issue and maybe someone has been treated and there's an human error in terms of the, the amount that he or she should be charged. Are you also facing similar situations here and maybe the ways are you coping up with it? How are you advising the government to make the system more reliable in the future? We, we, have, we, still, we still continue to have dialogue with the uh, social health authority. Yesterday, we, um, all the CEOs had met with the CEO of SHA and the chair of SHA. We, of course, um, uh, I mean, this is a continuous improvement. Uh, this is a new system. Um, of course, there will be challenges here and there, but it, it takes every single day, every week, and, 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 and so things will improve. Of course, there are, here, there are things here and there. Uh, and as a referral hospital, we'll be getting together so that uh, we can enhance uh, the patient experience. Thank you, Wanasi. As we wind up, maybe what is your parting shot and maybe what is your message to Kenyans, message to your fellow CEOs who are also listening, and maybe what do you think is the right way forward in terms of the SHA to handle all the challenges and also to make sure that Kenyans are aware maybe of the benefits? Um, I will tell Kenyans this is an excellent opportunity. Um, and Kenya is not unique in providing uh, universal health coverage. There are many countries that have rolled out this and they are successful. They are successfully done. So um, it is uh, really uh, very important for every single Kenyan to register uh, for SHA uh, because that's, way, that's the only way we, could, uh, we should be able to contribute to the healthcare needs um, of Kenyans.
Thank you so much. Are you been our viewers? That is Ahmed Dagani, the CEO in charge of Kenyatta University Teaching and Referral Hospital, highlighting some of the few issues that they have faced under the transition from NHIF to SHA, but indeed he has said partly the system is doing well. They're saying they're benefiting from it together with the patients, but they're saying there are some of the challenges that are still cropping up, but they're handling these gradually and keeping in touch with the Ministry of Health and also trying out to find out a way to make the system much better. Ayub. Willie, thank you. Good morning from the Kenyatta University Teaching and Referral Hospital. Dr. Kirwa, earlier we had uh, the views from the members of the public in Eldoret. And uh, Moi Teaching and Referral Hospital serves, of course, first the people of Wasingeshu County, as per the 2019 census, more than 1.2 million. And uh, of course, the larger Western Kenya, which is approximately more than 20 million people. Yeah, they are about 20 to 24 million. Uh, people. How then do you cope with such situation when some of the challenges expressed there were issues of medication and the personnel to attend to, uh, to the number of people and the growing demography in that regard? Yeah, so thank you very much. So for us in, uh, in, in MTRH, we actually serve about 24 million uh, people in the western region of Kenya. We see over 1,500 patients daily in outpatient. We have about 1,200 uh, inpatients. Um, on a daily basis, uh, out of about 1,100 beds. Again, that means we have, in some occasions, we have more than one patient in sharing, I mean, uh, patient sharing beds. So in terms of uh, the services that we do provide and the challenges that we face, and actually as expressed by, by the people who have actually spoken on TV, is that uh, during the initial aspect when we started rolled out share. Of course, the challenges that we've already enumerated on the network issues, uh, downtimes, et cetera, were actually real and, and there. But when the systems are progressively improved, everybody who requires a service has received their services, uh, despite the challenges of, 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 of the number of patients that we see. And for us, uh, as, in as much as possible, we have tried to see everybody who has come to us. Nobody's been turned away. And on the bigger challenge of the real congestion and the number of patients that we see, we, we are looking forward to the real um, referral system and referral strategy working so that we have less patients who do not need to come to MTRH. Uh, I would say there are a lot of patients who uh, would actually be sorted out at the refer, I mean, at the um, primary healthcare uh, phase, uh, level two, three, and four. For example, patients who have just a simple headache, uh, flu, uh, antenatal clinics, etc., yeah. would actually be sorted out uh, downstream to enable us to do the specialized care. And we look really forward to um, implementation fully of the SHA uh, system to re relieve us from the simple things that we actually face on a daily basis, what we call the walk-ins. You, you know, we run a system where we have almost a district hospital in a big referral hospital. Or, or you'd actually say a small county uh, or sub-county hospital. Mm -hmm. uh, that would actually be a relief for us when you have mainly the patients that we see are either emergencies and referrals. And that will sort out the issues of congestion, the issues of challenges of, on, on the pressure on our personnel. Uh, and that is something that is actually envisaged and uh, it is actually part of this process of rollout. Yeah. Uh, yes, Dr. Lesampi, I'll come. Yes. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Ayub. I, I just also wanted to get into this uh, discussion about uh, uh, dialysis. One at uh, Jaramogi Oginga Odinga Teaching and Referral Hospital, we had uh, 17 beds, you know, uh, initially. And I think, as Dr. Kamri has mentioned, some of them have gone down through the MES system. And 17 uh, beds? Yeah, there were 17 beds. That, for now we have patient. seven, yeah. Now we have seven. Okay. Six old ones and uh, one new one. Uh, the direction that uh, I think uh, is futuristic and actually very, very important for us is what Dr. Lichanga said. Mm. Uh, if you take uh, a dialysis patient, it requires two sessions in a week. You know, if we get the reimbursement, we are talking about 13,000, I think uh, 13,100 or something like that. Okay. If we multiply with, by 52 weeks, we are talking about 1.1 million. And uh, assuming that uh, we manage this patient for 10 years, that's about 10, 11 million. I think uh, uh, what is tenable, and I think what is actually important and critical going forward, is that uh, we actually uh, establish, you know, uh, transplant centers. You know, I think we're going to a specialty where I think you can now take the advantage of SHA, where for, through transplant, you can actually do a kidney transplant at about 1 million or 1.1. You know, I, I think it is, it is saves, 
you know, it helps our patients, you know, it brings them back to, you know, uh, to, to conduct our national business, uh, rather than actually continually putting them on that. Yeah. Similarly and, and, to and sickle cells. Doctor, that's a pertinent point that you yeah. mentioned. Yes. Um, and then also, let's be futuristic about this. That establishment needs finances. Yes. Mm. Already looking through that report by the Departmental Committee on Health, which uh, was um, looking at the state of referral hospitals in the country. Clearly, in all the referral hospitals across the country, the committee points out the need for more resource allocation to these institutions. How then can we establish that when already, one, there's gross underfunding, and then two, that's already below the required standards under the Abuja Declaration in terms of the allocation nationally we need to make to health generally. How then do we attain that? Yeah, I think uh, uh, probably before uh, I respond to that uh, very, very important question, I'd like to say that uh, you know, innovation and also leadership is also very critical here. Mm. When you look at uh, uh, Kisumu County, uh, Professor Nyang Nyong, you know, is very, very passionate about universal health care. In fact, it's the first county that uh, in 2018, in fact, uh, started what you call Marwa. Marwa was ours you know, assisting the indigents, you know, to have, you know, a, 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 a medical insurance. And I think this has also been pursued further, even by the current um, CACM in charge of medical services, Dr. Ganda. The issue is innovation. For example, I think for them, what they did was that uh, they decided to have all the indigents, you know, they paid an insurance of 500 shillings for all of them. And in fact, even as we speak, we have transitioned them into Shah with their 500 shillings. And we believe that I think uh, within the uh, end of this uh, next month, I think now they'll all be full in Shire rather than Marwa. But I think uh, uh, funding is very, very important. The issue here is that healthcare is very, very expensive. In fact, I don't believe there is anything called free medical healthcare. You know, somebody somewhere must be paying for it. Medical healthcare is very, very expensive. And therefore, that's why I think it is uh, uh, important that the national referral facilities probably are given proper seed resources. You know, one, to upgrade the equipment, you know, to get properly into specialization yeah. and get them out of dealing with primary health care so that they actually specialize, even super specialize in those areas. The other thing is that uh, sometimes we talk about uh, WHO, uh, I, I think, uh, expected, you know, I, I think percentages on health care. But sometimes we also forget to look into other things. One. I think the contribution of those patients who have been repaired, those patients who are made healthy to the economy is also very, very important. And sometimes we have not quantified, you know, how much does we put in healthcare, you know, to make our patients, you know, uh, okay for them to go and produce for the economy of this nation. So I think sometimes we also need to look at all these other aspects. We, uh, we're also looking at the issue of uh, uh, human resources in health, you know, I think uh, that the issue of salaries, the issue of terms and benefits for some of these is also a, a, a very, very critical element. And therefore, uh, it's also important to look at the, all the spectrum we know of uh, healthcare, you know, not in isolation of one item. And I think that's why I, th I think uh, uh, the current uh, SHA is actually trying to have the whole continuum, you know, of actually emphasizing more on preventive and promotional healthcare. You know, yes, Ayub, yeah. you know uh, and it is good to talk candidly. You see, the government does not just stop there. And uh, as Brian is saying, we did not just stop where we are talking about dialysis. We have gone beyond there. If you look at, there is a building that is next to traffic Nairobi area on our own Gong Road. Yeah. It's called East African Kidney Institute. We are establishing a kidney institute that will sort out issues of dialysis. What has the ministry done? Initially, when we were talking about transplant, we are having a challenge, even matching the donors. For, from the recipient to the donor, we, it used to take like a month because we had to send samples even out of the country mm -hmm. so that you can match the donors. What has we done? We have now a state-of-the-art HLA uh, lab, which can actually test uh, compatibility of donors. Two, we did phase one of Yaki, which was to upgrade. We have theaters ready for, for transplants. Now we can actually, even if we are able to do transplant, we can even be able to do three, four, five transplants in a week. 
that again has been facilitated again uh, ayub from the report you are saying from through yeah. parliament it, it po po pointed yes out, it yes. pointed that time and we, the government did not stop there we have been pushing on up to where we are now we can do transplant now what has Shah come to do now Shah will do the funding now we have the challenge has been paying so people have been raising funds they go to india what we are saying now we have the the facility we have the, the labs to test the compatibility of the, of the patients, and now we can start doing the, 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 the transplants. The, H, the, the, the human resource, we have had training. We, we even, as we talk now, Ayub, Iaki has even PhD students who are supposed to be taking care and learning how to take renal, renal, uh, renal uh, diseases in more serious. What we are saying is that the government has not just stopped there. Mm. We, they, there is something that is being done and the earlier we put that information across, and now what Sha has come now, and uh, Brian, I want now that you said you are the devil's advocate, <laughs> I want you to connect the dots. <laughs> what the challenge has been payment, people affordability, and then sustainability. And we were saying here, you and now, even after the transplant, what has been debilitating is the post-transplant uh, management. Uh, ma management. Mm. So what, have we, what are we doing as a, as a ministry, as a government? We've had this conversation where, and I was just telling you earlier, we are talking about getting medicines available at an affordable yeah, and uh, cheaper rate so that me, Kirwa, Dagane, and uh, Kemsa, we can have a candid discussion so that we either acquire those medicines in an economy of scale at a very low price, and if you had what HE was doing, His Excellency, mm. we are talking about local manufacturing, such that some of these drugs now will be so much available here in a very low price. With that, we can even the package that is being given 200,000 mm. post-transparent, that money will be, will be adequate. Okay. So, okay. Me, me, uh, Brian, <laughs> what we are talking about, we, this is a candid discussion that may, must be discussed. Yes. And even KEMSA must come in so that we can talk about end-to-end, end-to-end service. From the drug up to where we can follow, we can track that drug, who okay. used the drug, who swallowed it, at what point. And, and this is a candid, that this is a discussion, we don't want to leave it, that it's a sharp business. Okay. It so, must so, be a collective we, uh, responsibility. Yes, you'll, I'll come to you. <laughs> yes. Tari, you pointed out fundamental point, and that was on Roman number three of uh, the South African Kidney Project uh, yes. Institute project. Let's talk about oncology because that's all another yes. pertinent matter. I'm sure you uh, get patients yes. who are referred to, referred to your institutions and yes. the oncology department. So an average of 300 patients daily at the time. We are now five years down the line with an average waiting time of 60 days. This long wait is sometimes compounded by breakdown of machines and equipment. And uh, has the center, Cancer Center of Excellence been completed in this regard as a follow-up to this report by the Parliamentary Departmental Committee on Health? Uh, first, it has not been complete. Again, it's work in progress. And if you saw yesterday where we were standing uh, with the Cabinet Secretary, we were at the new Cancer Treatment Center, mm -hmm. which uh, phase one, ground floor, first floor, second floor, is complete. It is supposed to be a block that will go up to 10th floor. But Cancer Treatment Center is not just a building. It has equipment. We have now a LINAC, and if you look at the budget, budget uh, allocation uh, for this year, again, the parliament was kind enough to allocate us money to get another LINAC uh, machine. LINAC is a modern yeah. way of uh, uh, radiotherapy, uh, state of the art. What has been a challenge yeah. are the numbers. And now I thank uh, Kirwa and, uh, and Dagane yeah. because we are sharing now the responsibility. So in, in initially, responsibilities to be clear in terms of patients? Patients, okay. in terms of case, okay. patients, we are sharing the burden. So initially, Kenyatta was the only one which was able to do the, the, the radiotherapy. Now we, we, have, we are distributing a patient so that the, the, the waiting time is coming less. However, at the moment, we are in the process of acquiring another two LINAC machines. Again, for at the current, we have been doing 24 hours. During the day, we do the, the, the outpatient, and at night, we do the inpatient. That is not enough. However, what has changed with Shah? Initially, it was a fixed number. What Shah has done now, as long as the doctor has prescribed that you need 20, you need 30, again, you will be exposed to those. 
uh, there is no limit. We don't give a limit of uh, what needs to be done. There is also coverage of uh, chemotherapy, uh, brachiotherapy, and again, if you go to the package, and I would want people to read, and as I said, let people have the information. Mm -hmm. The package again for, for cancer is two ways. There is pre-diagnosis. Before we diagnose initially, we did not use to give people a package for uh, mammography, for example, for Doppler, for CT, MRI. It was not as part of the, mm -hmm. at the moment, you are covered pre. Secondly, what we are also promoting in the Ministry of Health is now, you know, NHIF was more curative. We are trying to see whether we can circumvent some of these circumstances before they come. And that's why we have promoters in the field to doing even blood pressure, doing some basic checkup so that if something is not right. So in terms of management of cancer, yeah. again, SHA is covering. Uh, but Dr. then how do you, um, I'll come to Dr. Lishanga, how then do you um, respond to this? Because uh, clearly there are cases where some patients have skipped um, chemotherapy sessions and, and the fear is that skipping or delaying chemotherapy cycles may offset the results obtained uh, prior that is the uh, chemotherapy cycle some cells could be in the resting stage and uh, may divide after completing the previous cycle and these are some of the challenges that are reported in your institutions yes in as much as you're talking about the sharing of the burden between you dr kirua dakane and dr lesiampe here how about the delayed cases here of someone needing an urgent chemotherapy which should be consistent as prescribed? First of all, in fact, what we should be talking about is the radiotherapy because that's the one that people have to wait for, for, for going to be put in the machine because the numbers are more. But in terms of chemotherapy, chemotherapy is real time. Chemotherapy, there is no waiting. In fact, chemotherapy is just uh, putting you on a regime and we inject. And if you want to know, even when the doctors were on strike, you, if you must know, we did not even close the, 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 the cancer because some of these conditions cannot wait. So what we have a burden with, and that's why we're saying we are sharing, is the issue of machine, the LINAC, the cobot, uh, the brachiotherapy, because the numbers are many. So, and that's why I'm, I'm happy with the parliament yeah. and the, the ministry. They have allocated us, because they have seen the burden, they have allocated us the number, and I'm, an, an, an extra, uh, we are in the process of acquiring extra two uh, units so that they can now uh, accommodate a, a quite a number of those uh, patients who are not, uh, who are, we are delaying. So, okay, uh, controlling the, pass of, uh, the power of the past with parliament. But when you sit down with these parliamentarians, Dr. Ari, uh, Kirwa, Dr. Lishenga, Dr. Lesiampi, and Dr. Um, uh, Kamuri, does our political establishment or policy players understand the, the impact of healthcare on a societal progress? Dr. Lesiampi talked about the need to have a welfare, a society that is healthy to drive the economy. But do they understand? I mean, this under-resourcing has been consistent, the perpetual continuity. If you look at that report still, all the referral hospitals that you, Dr. Taris, lead here have been under-resourced and grossly so. Do you think they understand the impact of healthcare? One thing I can tell you, uh, you and you, are, you see, why do we treat MPs like they are foreigners? They are also from the same society. And I'll tell you what especially this parliament has done. They took their time, they came to Kenyatta. We visited the whole hospital, and they have the picture of the burden of, and not just, they also went to MTRH. Madare. And, and they went to Madare, they went to Dagane's place, and they have, they have articulated the issue. And I thank, Pokosa is a doctor, and uh, a number of doctors are in that committee. They articulate the issues, and that's why you see, from the resources that we have as a government, a lot has also been spared. For, to handle the, um, the health issues. I will surprise you, which you may not know, actually. Even as we speak, uh, at the moment, we will be the first center to have in vitro fertilization. IVF, you have ever heard of IVF? The government has allocated money to Kenyatta to start an IVF, which will be sorting out people's uh, Kenyans who cannot be able to conceive. 
This will be the first thing. That can tell you, and it was also passed through, through Parliament. That's why I'm saying, if you look at the way the parliamentarians have been handling issues in the recent times, not in the past, in the recent times, they are articulating issues. Yes, and, okay. and I wish uh, Kirwa would also comment yeah, on this. You'll come to that, yes, Dr. Lishanga. I, I, you know, just listen. And, and, sorry, I kept you waiting. <laughs> no, it's okay. We still have some time. I'm just listening to Dr. Kamuri, and, and uh, I can tell you, I think this transition is great for, for, for national referral hospitals. Um, one of the things, because uh, I've been involved in this conversation, that I noticed was that the level of hand-holding uh, that uh, Shah provided to the, to the National Referral Hospitals is commendable. I think we, we had even, a, you know, the local, a local office at KNH that yeah. was supporting the transition. And so to that extent, I must say that we, we need to commend Shah and give them their flowers as far as handholding of the National Referral Hospitals is concerned. The, I, I also think the benefit package that has been created is especially v uh, very good for the National Referral Hospitals. You are able to do more within the share package. Um, but I want to just to, to touch on what Dr. Kiro was saying, that you're running a district hospital or, or a small sub-county hospital within a National Referral Hospital is a, is a real challenge. And my, my, my position as a representative of rural hospitals is that one day we look to a day when you can actually become true national referral hospitals and that you offload some of these homers and mm. sore throats and all these things Absolutely. to, the, to yeah. the lower level facilities mm. so that those facilities can provide that care. And I'll tell you, Ayub, I think the challenge is very clear. You talk about funding to the national referral hospitals. One of the challenges we have had talking to people in Treasury and Parliament is the lack of connection between a healthy person and the economic output. I think when, when you are maybe an accountant and a treasury, what you see is an Excel sheet and numbers, and you have to pay this debt and pay this HR. But I think it's, it's about time as a country we realized that investment is in healthcare is actually investment mm -hmm. in the economy. Mm -hmm. I, will, I, will, I will tell you that my main concern is not shift fund. The shift fund is going to work mm -hmm. because 2.75% is much better in terms of financial health of the, of the healthcare than we have ever had. So I think that basket is gonna be large. My concern is the primary healthcare fund, which is now going, going to sort out Dr. Kirwa's homers and flus which keep coming. Because we, if we fund primary healthcare appropriately, those le lower level facilities can then offload you. Mm -hmm. My next concern is where we need our national referral hospitals to be going, which is into transplant medicine, genetics, you know, AI, teleradiology, mm -hmm. neurosurgery. I'm really happy what I'm seeing happening at GTRH with the neurosurgery, for example. You have taken up neurosurgery, you've taken up laparoscopy. Mm -hmm. We saw your news, uh, Dr. Kirwa, about doing the first cochlear transplant. Mm. This is the direction where we think national referral hospitals need to go. Unfortunately, that money for those kind of things will come from the ECCI fund. You see the emergency chronic and critical illness fund, because a lot of these patients who need those kind of interventions are chronic patients. Okay. Now, my concern yeah. is that at mm. the level of uh, parliament and uh, you know budgeting, are we putting resources? I saw 45 billion in the appropriation bill for referral hospitals, uh, 22 on supply side and, uh, and uh, 22 on capital. Uh, I think it is still too little. Uh, the national referral hospitals need to be better financed, right. but mm. there is a bigger problem, Ayub. Primary healthcare, until we get primary healthcare right, uh, right I think this gentleman here will not be able to do really what national hospitals are supposed All to right. do. All right, and in the primary health care fund, because uh, the social health authority is uh, basically meant or structured to manage three funds. One is the primary health care fund, and which required by estimate about 50 billion Kenya shillings, but allocated only 4 billion Kenya shillings, which then means the flood gets, if pointed your way, <laughs> then uh, the referrals will be inundated. So let's sample the feedback. You'll respond to the questions. Uh, Dr. Lisiampe, Dr. Ko Kamuri, and Dr. <coughs> The hashtag on next is Citizen Day Break. The SMS code is double two four double two at Citizen TV Kenya and at Ayub Abdikadir. Now, the first one from KMIC says, thank you for hosting referral hospital CEOs. I don't trust the analysis. I hope 
um, you can play videos from hospitals or just random Kenyans to confirm. CEOs will not embarrass the government, you know. The social health authority is a scam, it's a sham, and they have uh, uh, to defend the 104 billion Kenya shillings. So what happens, yes, is question, when there is hiccups with the system, uh, what are patients doing, getting services without pay? May those CEOs walk to the casualty and confirm, AMA will postpone sickness, uh, says reject shift from reducting 2.75% and being so ambiguous. So you can note down the questions, we'll be responding. Okelo Malimu says, I wonder whether the government's main intention of creating shift had anything to do with improving healthcare. I equally wonder whether our contributions to the fund are ring fenced. The government should have fixed leakages in NHIF instead of creating another monster in the name of social health authority. Dixon underscore Luo says, are you what uh, uh, was hard in adding these extra services in NHIF instead of creating a new monster? Transition should have been given three months to close NHIF. Remember life matters is uh, not the competence-based curriculum where you can mention teething problem, death, no reverse. MC underscore Ruma says, the transition from NHIF to the social health authority was chaotic. What was the problem with NHIF? Most of the referral hospitals are grappling with capacity challenges, inadequate medicine, and all equipments. Dialysis and cancer patients suffered during the transition period. Andres Wille says, Shaw was established without a proper implementation plan with clear deliverables made worse by their disorganized communication strategy where everyone is saying everything. Um, as we respond to that also, uh, the other response from uh, this is on uh, on X, formerly Twitter. So let me just uh, point the question your way, uh, Dr. Um One here says, uh, my wife had a C-section on the 2nd of November, that was some three days ago, and I had to pay a total of 54,000 Kenya shillings for the operation, drugs, and bed. This is after changing the hospital we are used for affordability reasons. Um, the CEOs have no touch. This is a, a Mutenke MJ. With what's happening on the ground, I am registered and my status reads active in their system. Deductions are done automatically on my pay slip. However, the so social health authority isn't working. We have been paying out of our pocket since November 2023. Maybe if you can respond to that, and then I'll come to you. Later. On the C-section, um, 2nd November, he had to pay 54,000 Kenya shillings for operation drugs, uh, bed. Uh, this is despite his status being active on the social health authority and deductions that are done on the pay slip. Well, um, uh, Ayub, I'm not sure that is Kenyatta, and I don't think... <laughs> yeah, he has not specified. <laughs> one, uh, I wish he had, yeah. yeah. One thing I can, even before Sha, we still had Linda Mama. So we still had maternity cover. So we cannot talk about somebody Paying. And two things I also want to put it here. The good thing about Sha, now there is no incubation. You know, initially, NHIF, you pay, we were waiting for uh, 60, days. six days for the cover to be active. For this one, there is no, once you pay, we, we start uh, delivering services. In fact, we are calling it the magic of Sha, unlike the, 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 the previous. So at the moment, maternity is still covered. In fact, uh, and Kilo will, uh, will uh, confirm that the, the cover has actually slightly increased because what was being reimbursed for Linda Mama has slightly been uh, enhanced. So nobody will, will be uh, asked for money. As How as much is the cover for maternity? Uh, uh, C uh, normal C delivery is, is uh, 10,000. 10, yeah. C-section is 32,000. 32,000. And, uh, and, and Dr. Kamuri is right that uh, we had facilities getting as low as 3,500 yes. on normal delivery. Yeah. Uh, some of them 6,000. So 10,000 is a big change. Yeah. Uh, 17,000 was for cesarean section. Yeah, yeah. Now we are talking 32,000. 32. Yeah. So uh, in terms of the benefit, I, I want to be very clear. The, we think the benefit package is better in a lot of aspects. Uh, cancer care, yeah. dialysis care, those ones have improved. Surgeries, uh, yes. I think a lot of surgeries, the benefits right. are good. Where we still have issues and where you know my colleagues might not know very well is on primary care. We do need and we need to help them because if we get primary care right, then you guys can do yeah. your job. Yes, Dr. Lassie. Yeah, Thank you very much. Uh, uh, are you maybe uh, before I respond to what uh, has come from the, uh, from the audience, I'd like to say that uh, one, uh, Kisumu County, for example, 
I think uh, one of the greatest challenges we have experienced is the sickle cell anemia. Mm. It's actually Kisumu and western part of the country. Mm. For the first time, Shah has given us, you know, uh, you know, some uh, some resources. You know, in fact, they have given us a benefit, you know, for those people who are facing that condition. And indeed, uh, it's a very serious condition, which has never been covered by NHIF. And I would like to uh, uh, to request uh, uh, our audiences not to actually to condemn us as CEOs that uh, we are actually <laughs> defending Shah. We are actually talking about facts. When I say that, you know, sickle cell had no uh, uh, had no benefit. Now it is there. You know, it's a fact. You know, when we say that, you know, delivering our mothers, you know, for the last one month, we have delivered 400 of them at Jaramogi, Oginga Odinga Teaching and Referral Hospital, at a, at a rebate or a refund of 10,000 shillings from 5,000. You know, it's a fact. Mm -hmm. uh, we are also seeing that uh, uh, NHIF is actually, was actually looking at curative. When you look at the issues of cancer, which we have just discussed here, one, uh, SHA is actually intervening at the point of screening you know, which was never a benefit. Now, uh, the point here is that we rather intervene, you know, at early stages where we screen for cancer, you know, breast cancer, cervical cancer, and all other cancers, okay. so that we can have intervention at that level, so that this does not progress to, uh, to phase four. Thank you. I, I think uh, uh, the point here is that, uh, and I, I think as I conclude, uh, being a student of strategy and change, if we recall, I, I think uh, Kenya Post and Telecommunication was one of the strongest, powerful, you know, uh, state corporations in Kenya. <coughs> it failed to acknowledge change and accept change. The only thing that they failed to do was accept this phone, you know, mobile phone. Yeah. Okay. They went under. Poster. You know, all of us recall, we used to send letters through uh, buying a stamp. We just failed to recognize that, you know, there is a, there are matatus which can actually carry these letters very fast. Thank you. And so I think uh, what we need to do here, I yeah. think as Kenyans, okay. is that let's agree that we have a change and this change is going to be progressive. Mm -hmm. And I think as we, we register, yes. I think we now demand, yes. you know, for this additional. Uh, yes, Dr. Kira, briefly. Yeah, so thank you very much. Uh, I think again, uh, to echo that the transition has had challenges, but the challenges are being resolved one by one that the biggest thing and the biggest investment and the biggest legacy that has been created by Sexual the President for this government is SHA. It's actually a game changer. It will make a very big difference to the health of the people in Kenya. And it's actually an equalizer. And as you heard, even the, the um, rebates and the and, 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 um, benefits. benefits are actually been uniform for both private and public. Thank you. It will actually make a significant difference and just, just all embrace SHA and sort out the problems as we go along. Thank you, Dr. Ali, much appreciated. We are out of time, and many thanks for your presence here. All of you here present, Dr. Evans Kamori, CEO of the Kenyatta National Hospital, his colleague uh, from the uh, Jeramogi Oginga Odinga Teaching and Referral Hospital, Dr. Richard Desiampe, Dr. Ahmed Dakane was with us virtually here a while ago, and Dr. Philip Kirwa, the Chief Executive Officer of the Moi Teaching and Referral Hospital, Dr. Brian Lishenga on Mamida Trite is the Chairperson of the Kenya Urban Rural Hospitals Association of Kenya. Many thanks for your time, gentlemen. Much appreciated, and we look forward to further engagements. Up next is uh, Social Hour with Safina Chieng, and we'll see you tomorrow morning here at the same time. Till then, good morning.